All right, everybody, we are here on Sunday. It's two o'clock and we are going to be continuing in the Hollywood hairstyles series. Um, so we've been working from 10 Hollywood hairstyles from the 1950s. Um, I've posted previously, excuse me, my bangs are being weird. Uh, I posted previously the PDF link that you can follow along. Today we're going to be working on Jane Russell's style. So I'm just going to get to reading um, the description first. And it starts with, uh, The squareness of Jane Russell's face is softened by her long bob with its side part, which we'll see here in a minute. Uh, the hair is given a slight lift above the forehead to round the face, and keeping the hair flat on one side of the face, fluffy on the other, also modifies the squareness of the face. Her hair is thick, heavy textured, and has a slight natural wave. Uh, and then how her hair is cut. The hair is parted on the left, which on my doll head you can see here. Parted on the left, with the top lock on the thick or right side about three and a half inches long once more this hair is probably longer than three and a half inches the hair is then tapered down the side to an inch below shoulder length which my doll head doesn't have shoulders um and then on the part or left side the hair is also shoulder length but it's tapered to an inch below shoulder length and then also across the back um and so we're just gonna go this is gonna be a wet set she's been prepped with a show um, after getting washed and prepped with the Miracle Creator, um, I know it's backwards, I apologize, but the Miracle Creator, and then all I'm going to be using for a setting cream or gel is the Super Fixer uh, gel from Style Link. I've already put it in the hair, it's already ready to go. And this is going to be a fairly simple uh, styling. I'm just going to read it off really quick. Uh, the right side of the hair is set in a double row of three stand-up curls rolled under. The curls are combed out, clips are used to shape them into three waves. The part side is arranged in a double row of pin curls which continue across the back. So I'm just going to show you the illustration. They're showing the... This I'm going to actually, instead of doing stand-up curls, I'm going to do rollers. And so instead of getting two rows, we're going to have a single uh, roller for each of those and then everything else is just a uh, double row of pin curls and remembering um, in this particular uh, setup it is pin curls that aim toward the face and we're just gonna go ahead and begin here I'm gonna start on the side with what I'm gonna use uh, rollers on. And this can be interpreted into, here we go, this can be interpreted into um, a um, curling iron if you want. Move my tray here, at least to somewhere that's accessible. And to Count for this, I'm going to probably go right to the temple eyebrow area for the first roller. And given how thick the hair is, we'll determine how big of a roller I'm going to want to use. I think I'm going to go with the tan roller. It's a Three quarters of an inch around or so, maybe. I'm not entirely certain. So I'm gonna raise this up because I want to get some lift in here. Is my hand all up in the way? I'm gonna come around. I'll see if I can do this a little better. So I can show what I'm doing, which is to comb up and smooth out. Uh, to get height, we want this to be on base. So rolling it from an upward position will ensure that it is on base and gets the height we want. So the first step 
is to, let me see, raise this up so you can see what I'm doing on the end of the roller, which is to smooth everything over and then begin the process of rolling. If anything ever gets a little out of line, I'll use the end of my rat tail comb to tuck in and around so that everything stays smooth and uniform. And then so the front's trying to fall off, so push it back, tell it to stay. And then as you can maybe see, it is wrapped completely on base, meaning that the curler is sitting right on the section of hair and then utilizing a couple single prong clips, one on each end. And there we have our first roller. This could also be attained by doing like they were saying, doing two side-by-side stand-up curls. I'll show you really quickly a you know, way to do a stand-up curl here. I'm just going to pull it out. Um, a way you can do a stand-up curl is by wrapping around your fingers. I'm going to set the comb down and wrapping. Use your fingers to wrap around yourself until it is where you want it and then you can pin it. I'm still using rollers because I think that they're going to give a sharper finish and I know for sure when I use a roller that these ends will be smooth versus the potential for not smoothness with the not being as smooth when you do it by hand. Like this, I know these ends are tapered and smooth. I'm just gonna roll on down. Push that back where I want it. Push that back where I want it. I really don't want it to fall off. Okay, and then another roller on base. It's one of the nice things about using rollers is that you can quickly, like this whole subsection all the way from the left hand part all the way over, this is going to be the last, um, the last curl. So it's going to take a little bit of work here to comb through all of this top section because it's a lot of hair to gather up and put on a roller but we're gonna do it and I'm still gonna use the tan roller for the sake of rolling this up this might be one that you might want to split into two sections if you were say doing it with a curling iron or trying to do stand-up curls without a roller. Uh, this will take a while to dry. This is definitely uh, a style that I might not consider utilizing on a human client if I have the choice and tuck that in. This one I'm going to use extra clips because of the amount of hair that is, that is here. The amount of hair that we are dealing with. The amount of hair that is going to be hanging on here. It's going to take some time to dry and I need to let you know that I will not be doing a live stream next week.
due to um, taking a course in in um, hair extensions. So that'll be fun. All right. Well, now we have three, one, a two, and a three rollers in. And we can start on the pin curls. Two rows of pin curls, relatively simply. Um, we're gonna start with this side section because it won't take but just a moment or two to throw in a couple of pin curls. I'm deciding if I wanna be a, look, blue ear. I wanna be a cheater and so we're going to use about the same size of a parting as we did on that first roller. Uh, I might be a cheater and use clippies and not use hairpins. Um, and because she doesn't have a load of hair, start. just going to work to the front, like they say, smoothing, and pull this down. Smoothing, wrapping. I think I'm going to go around two fingers just for the size of the, um, the size of the, the rollers that I chose to use. I want to have uh, complementary size um, pin curls. So, yeah, I, I think today I'm going to go with using, stick with the the clippies instead of instead of doing come on stay where I want you there we go I'm just trying the reason I was I was futzing with that uh, clip was so that I can do my best to maintain the shape of the pin curl so we can Continue in the fashion. So once more, two fingers, we're gonna wrap around and then I'm pulling between my fingers to encourage the telescoping of the curl. And then just carefully rolling it up into itself and laying it on top of the neighbor and now I'm just gonna slowly but surely place the clip so it should hold the way I want it and because this is a very simple uh, they only want two rows so we're going to have a little a little stretch here and because this is this doll has a particularly thick hairline. I'm going to split this front section into, stay where I put you, splitting it into three instead of just two. So here we go. Coming underneath, hoping that we can see. I'm going to move my finger back a little bit and then see what happens here okay I'm just gonna not put it between my fingers this time because it wasn't behaving tucking that in then a lot of what I'm doing as I'm placing these curls is what I call encouragement encouraging the hair to go where I want it to Encouraging the hair to keep the curl pattern that I'm looking for. So now we're going to split this into two other subsections. Just given the amount of hair that is available to use. And we're going to want to, pardon my arm, want to encourage a smoothness at this root section. We want to see... Hold on, I'm putting my face in here. See what it's yelling at me about. Cool. Yay, hi Chandler. Um, 
So we're wanting to get smoothness uh, towards the towards the part, but curl towards the end here. So let's see if I can pull that into this curl. Uh, this hair has been cut in the longer version uh, of a midi cut. So she is tapered and blended to keep that 1940s aesthetic, even though this is definitely from the 1950s. And we'll do this last subsection. Once more, we want to keep things smooth. We want to keep it because this will eventually become the part that is tucked behind the ear in the styling portion in the comb out portion, which I will show as best I can with the with the um, as best I can with the picture accompanying this style. So give me just a second here, and that looks like it'll be all right. So. What we can see here really quickly is that on the left side, it's been pulled back behind the ear, possibly even uh, secured with a comb back there. All right, let's see. Yay! All right, so we have a quick recap for the front is using rollers to do three stand-up curls using um, just uh, uh, two rows of pin curls here so as to create the shaping and now we get to go to the back of the hair which will also be two rows of pin curls uh, across the back so what I'm going to do is Get out of the way and part the bottom row out first and then then the um the second row will line up here so the first or bottom row is going to go right here that feels like a good amount and just like um what we did Last time, um, as is suggested by the intro to the book that I'm working from, is uh, to stay, that's what it's do, is to roll, knock my doll head over, uh, is to roll all of the pin curls forward toward the face. And because we have a deep left part, I'm going to just do a little bit of an off-center um, separation so that it kind of follows the lines of the hairstyle. So here we go with the first, can we see? Can we kind of see? I'm going to move the, I'm just moving it all over the place today. Let me know if this is something that, that works better if I move the, uh, camera around as a, as I need or as I, See fit. So we're using two fingers to create larger sized curls for the sake of having used medium sized rollers. Man, I am all. All right, grab a clip. Um, having used medium sized rollers on the side that needed the stand up curls. So that in there and I'm not worried about them being super tight this is definitely a style that is more about just having the the curl having the the flow than it is about having I'm gonna grab a clip ahead of time um, than it is about having um, a 
rigid styling. Definitely um, part of the the image in the in the fifties was definitely a looser interpretation of hairstyles where you didn't have to be quite as. I'm going to use the word polished, even though they certainly had polish in their styling, just that it um, was a different kind of polish. You didn't have to have a stiff head of hair. You just had a, a nice bit of curl and bounce. You didn't necessarily look for um, setting in a fashion that is um, geared towards... Like, there wasn't really a lot of rolls or really, really defined waves in the 1950s aesthetic, whereas in the uh, 40s, it was really all about uh, polish. Although, an interesting note in this particular style is that we're still seeing the... Uh, the flat crown of the 1940s. We're still seeing a little bit of that, just in this case, it's a little bit more, you stop that. Sometimes you gotta talk to it. Um, you're seeing a little bit more of a soft wave rather than very deliberate, um, solid shapings. And because we did a little bit off center, we're just going to come up here and split this in half. And you may have noticed that I switched hands to work with. Uh, I like to keep symmetry. I like to work in matching and complementary fashion. So. For me, this uh, switching hands makes sense. Stay, and last one. Now, like I said, this is still, you know, it doesn't have to be perfectly tight or perfectly, um, set because it is meant to be a little bit loose, a little bit more uh, fun and playful rather than being this perfectly sculpted situation. So we're coming up on the end of that. And nope, that didn't go anywhere that I want it to be. All right, fine, we'll come the other way. There, that'll hold it. Okay, so we are down to the very last uh, subsection of this style. And as I said before, because we do have this off-center part, I do want to put the weight of curls towards the heavy side. So I'm going to come from the part and meet where I split up the curls before. And we'll probably have a similar amount of curls. Like I think I'm just gonna split this in half and do two larger size curls and keeping keeping the crown smooth, keeping keeping the crown relatively before I get going. Oops, so I'm ready. And then back to using my right hand. Wrapping the hair around two fingers because I want a larger curl pattern. And then we'll just tuck it in and roll it up on itself. And really, it's okay to lay it on its neighbor because that's just where it needs to live. It's a-okay. Because we're still looking for a much more casual, like I said, it's not, it's structured, but not in a way that 
you have to lay every single curl exactly uh, certain ways. I'm hoping that we can kind of see what I'm doing. I've been trying to uh, direct the camera in such a fashion as to be able to see what the heck I'm doing when I'm doing it. As long as it doesn't uh, warp the curl, that's probably my biggest concern. I'm fine with the idea of having um, looser style curls, less structured, but I'm also still looking at the um, situation of wanting smoothness and not wanting dents in my um, in the curl itself. Like, I'm not worried that it needs to be stiff. I'm just more concerned that it be, um, smooth. So that you don't end up having weird twists and dents. And because I don't have a neighbor to park this on, I'm just going to tuck it kind of right behind the ear as a transitionary curl between the front and the back and lay my pin in in such a fashion as to with any luck not dent anything and I don't know I might just well I might actually turn this into four here just given the amount of space still smoothing out the crown section and then Oh, good. The comb didn't hit the floor. Using my my fingers here, wrapping around, pulling it in, and then tucking it up on itself, and following the, the pattern. We kind of want a, a little bit of a U-shape here as it's going across the, the back of the head. Yep, and we'll just do two more little subsections. go and then smoothing again it's always important no matter what your the base of your curl is is to smooth smooth and uh, make it very ribbon like so that's why wrapping around my fingers you'll notice that I'm keeping it flat and um, consistent tension consistent Uh, not allowing the hair to, say, turn in on itself or anything of that nature, but really trying to keep it as consistent. Man, that was a hard word to get out. Uh, consistent in the tension and um, smoothness of the ribbon of hair so that you can get a smooth comb out because if there was a twist say in the hair as I'm rolling it up it will create a crimp and that then ruins the smooth look of what we are aiming for All right, so a quick and easy, I think, or relatively quick and easy. It only took about 20 some odd minutes to pop all that in. So now we are just going to do a comparative of this to the, uh, the set pattern. Uh, I know we're mirrored. I'm very well aware. That's why I'm constantly recommending to uh, go to the link I have posted on previous posts regarding this um, the Hollywood hairstyles so that you can read along work along with yourself it's a free download um, so to begin with we have the right side which is 
this here, which is representing, they wanted two rows of stand-up curls. Uh, and as I chose to use rollers, we just have a single row of rollers uh, for these stand-up curls on the right side. Um, chose rollers to make sure the ends are nice and smooth. Uh, and then we move to the left hand side, which is shown as, eh, I didn't go up as high, but I don't think that's super necessary. Didn't realize, I wasn't paying enough attention. So the two rows actually started up here, but I've chosen to start them down across the hairline. Um, so that's the left side. And then in the back, we just have two rows of the pin curls. So two rows of pin curls. And then we're gonna, we're gonna let this dry for quite some time because it's going to take a while to get this dry. Um, and with that, uh, I need to once more let everybody know that I will not be able to make um, a, or be able to do a live stream next Sunday due to taking some continuing education classes for my hair and that falls right over this time. So it's going to be two weeks until we do the comb out. So she should be dry by then, I would hope. Um, and then when we do the comb out, then you can see how this um, styling creates a really nice voluminous, voluminous um, style while still having some control and, and direction. And that will be in two weeks. I'm sorry that we can't do it next week, but I am taking a class in hair extensions and it won't be, I won't be available to work on, um, work on any kind of a live stream that day. But in two weeks, we will come back to this styling and we will comb it out and show you that um, it won't even take, um, but just a, a quick brushing, maybe a little, I might just go ahead and stick with maybe uh, one of the Oil Wonders oils as the final piece and then maybe a little hairspray um, and then show you also how it was saying about using clips to create the waves so I can show you how to do that as well. I'll probably use my longer single prong clips as how to put a wave in and then secure it, spray it, and we'll be done. Um, I hope that uh, you got something out of this. If there are any questions, by all means, please ask. And I will see everyone in two weeks.